When I was young, I read adventure books set in exotic faraway lands. I pictured opulent riads, bustling souks, bartering merchants and silk road traders. I never dreamed that the cities I pictured in my imagination actually existed. Until now. Entering the Fez Medina feels like stepping back in time, into one of those old adventure novels. It's preserved, frozen in time, largely unchanged for centuries. A vivid blend of colours, sounds, smells and tastes. We're Chris and Lydia. Join us as we explore ancient Fez. I promise you won't be disappointed. We arrived in Fez last night and settled into our stunning Riyadh on the edge of the old Medina, just a stone's throw from the iconic Blue Gate. This morning, waking up to such a historic and vibrant place feels surreal. The sights and sounds outside are calling to us and we're looking forward to diving into all the rich history and culture that Fez has to offer. Welcome to our Riyadh. It's um, called, let's have a little look, it's hiding behind here. Oh, there we go. It's Riyadh Zamain. Riyadh Zamain, in Fez. And it's beautiful. Come look at this door. Look at the, yeah, the details and the knocker. I won't knock it. This is our beautiful Riyadh. It's gorgeous. Come and have a look. Look at it, it's beautiful. Look at this ornate carvings all around the windows and the timber. This is where we have breakfast. breakfast. So inside the Riyads, they're lavishly decorated. There's mosaic tiles, there's beautiful windows and decorative iron railings. Lovely fountain. So this is typical of uh, Riyads that the centre courtyard they go to town with the decoration. The outside is quite bland uh, because the Moroccan people don't like to show off or to flaunt their wealth. All the bedrooms are up on the second and third levels and it's open to the elements upstairs. I like the eclecticness of everything. You know, you've got it doesn't all have to be matchy matchy. Like you look at there's a blue table here and there's a yellow table there and then you've got, you know, different chairs here and different chairs there and orange and everything's really eclectic. But you know, that's the door. <laughs> okay, let's head out. So this is the outside of the Riyadh, as you can see, it's very plain. Uh, there's only a few little windows, so in the heat of the summer it um, keeps the heat on the outside and keeps the inside cool. We're off on a walking tour of Fez this morning. A beautiful sunny day again. We're really being very lucky with the weather at the moment. Um, so hopefully we won't get lost in the Medina of Fez. Apparently there's 9,000 little alleyways and streets. So uh, we've got two days to find our way home. <laughs> Before we hit the Medina, we took the bus up to an old fort on the hill overlooking the city for an incredible view over Fez. What a panoramic view up from the top of the hill here at an old fort overlooking the Fez. There's 14 kilometres of wall around the city. 200,000 people live within it. It's a good vantage point from up here. On the other side of Fez looking back across. It's a great view. We start our walking tour at the new part of the Medina, at the entrance to the Royal Palace. We can't go inside, but we can still admire its beautifully decorated gates. Fez is another former capital of Morocco. We're at the Royal Palace. There's 12 Royal Palaces all over Morocco and lots of Royal residences and the current King uh, travels around a lot, seeing the people.
We made our way through the new Medina just as the market and souk vendors were setting up for the day. It was wonderful to take in all the vibrant colours, aromas and sounds as we strolled along. Despite its name, the new Medina dates back to the 13th century, so it's far from new. As well as the Royal Palace, it also contains the historic Jewish Quarter, or Mela. Fez used to have the largest Jewish community in Morocco, but after the Second World War, almost the entire Jewish population left, many immigrating to Israel. It's reported that there's only 150 Jews left in Fez. The history of the Mela is maintained though, and you can still visit some of the old synagogues and view the Jewish cemetery. On our way from the new Medina to the old Medina, we stopped by a ceramics factory to see how the renowned Fez ceramics are made. So we made the bottom first like that, then we do the top, the cover. Lydia likes her um, crafts and arts. She's, you've made clay before, haven't you? Yeah, it's not easy. No. They make it look See that one behind you? That's the perfect size. I reckon we could fit you inside of that one. That's my urn. That's, your urn. That's my urn when I die. So Lydia may have just bought <laughs> a bathroom <laughs> sink. <laughs> I said I was going to do it. And a tagine. <laughs> Lydia was joking with our daughter before she left that she was going to buy a sink. And our daughter said, no, no, you're just joking. But we now can tell her. <laughs> she has an expensive taste. She has an expensive taste. Oh, it's a bit of a tight squeeze. We entered the old Medina of Fez through the narrowest street I have ever seen in search of a place to have lunch. Restaurant hidden in one of the laneways of Fez Medina. Oh my goodness, look at that! So, this is like a Riyadh, it's been converted into a restaurant.
Oh, this has got skewered meat, chicken and beef. Fez was founded in the 8th century and developed as two rival settlements on either side of a river. In the 11th century, these settlements were united under one ruler, forming what is now the Old Medina. This is a funduk, which is a, basically like a hotel, except you can bring your animals here. So the animals stay downstairs in the stable area, and then up on the second and third floors are rooms for the people to stay. It's now been converted into a carpentry museum. If you ever come to the museum, Make sure you go up to the roof for a great view over the old Fez Medina. <laughs> Fez is regarded as the spiritual capital of Morocco home to numerous mosques and religious schools, known as madrasas. Among them is the al Karawiyan Mosque, recognised as the oldest university in the world. Nearby the old university is the intricately designed al Atariyan Madrasa. It's a school of theology. <laughs> Yeah, and it only took two years to build, and they had it would house 37 students who were studying theology. And they lived up on the first floor. Look at the ornate carvings. In addition to its Medina's royal palace and religious schools, Fez is also known for its production of textiles, leather and ceramics. After a quick stop to see a Fez weaver in action, we headed to the iconic Chuaro Tannery to experience firsthand how Fez leather is made. Chuara Tannery is the largest in Fez and one of the oldest in the world. The tanning industry has been operating continually in Fez since the city's inception and they still use the traditional tanning methods. We're at the tannery. I can smell it. It's not a nice smell. in the white part. Yeah. We put skins one week with salt, water, lime, and pigeon droppings. Yeah. Pigeon mm -hmm. droppings? Yes, pigeon droppings is ammoniac, not your red skin can be very soft. The tannery guide tells us that the raw hides from goats, sheep, and cows are first placed in the white wells with water, salt, lime, and pigeon droppings. The pigeon droppings provide ammonium, which helps soften the hide to make it easier to remove the hair and fur, but it also produces a horrible odour that you can smell well before you enter the tannery. We were given mint leaves to try to mask the stench, 
but I'm glad we were able to watch from the terrace rather than down at the wells. After one week in the white wells, the hides are washed in a large washing wheel. They're then placed in the round dye wells for two weeks with natural plant-based dyes such as indigo, henna, saffron, poppies, pomegranates and cedarwood. The hides are then hung in the open air to dry before the leather workers turn them into shoes, bags, jackets and a host of other products. $25 for jackets. Huh? Want a new yeah, job? No, I don't want a new job. <laughs> I love the smell of fresh, fresh leather. Not yeah. the leather out there, yeah. but the, the leather yeah, in here. Leather. It's yeah. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah. That smells good. beautiful spot to have a afternoon drink on the top of our Riyadh with the view out over Fez. That's a view to remember. Our Riyadh is perfectly located near the blue gate of Fez where the blue mosaic tiles welcome visitors to the city. Blue is the colour of Fez, but on the other side of the gate, facing the Medina, the tiles are actually green, symbolising Islam. Our mission for tonight's dinner was to find a tagine with a view. Yeah, we have up there at the yeah, and up there, when you finish, if you want to go to planet map, yeah, yeah, they come. <laughs> you will come back. Not a bad spot for dinner. Hello, Moggy. Hello. Hello. Good morning! After a good night's sleep and a hearty breakfast, we've built up the courage to explore the old Medina by ourselves. There's no internet in the Medina, so no Google Maps to rely on. But first, we need a coffee. We're right near the Blue Gate, one of the major entrances into the Medina in Fez. Bye. It's a beautiful little place. I've got inside tables upstairs there. there you go. Takeaway, music, books, Wi Fi, non smoking, which is great, cold, air conditioning, there's suitable for vegetarians, vegans, and gluten free. Which is great for Lydia because she was getting a little tired of tagines for yeah. every meal. Yeah, I not that they're not oh, nice, they're beautiful, they're beautiful but. but... Just for 19 days it might get a little bit much. So we're going to get a spiced coffee and it's made up, they brought out these containers to show what's going to be in the coffee. So cinnamon, which smells beautiful, star anise, and then rose petals. So we haven't had that before, so we're going to have a look and see what it tastes like. Very yeah. excited about this. I can taste it. It's a bit nutty. It's well balanced. Yeah, it's, uh, it's still got coffee in it though. It's still got Still got caffeine, which is important. <laughs> yeah, I reckon the Moroccan coffee is pretty strong because I we drink a lot of coffee at home, and I feel um, a little bit more jittery after <laughs> drinking. Like I feel like myself twitching a little bit more after their coffee, so I think their coffee is a bit stronger than our coffee. What have you got? I got some of these. Lovely. <laughs> sweet mm. treats. Very, very sweet treats. Not sure what we call them, but no. we. But they've got little sesame seeds on this one. Mm. Yummy? Yeah. 
Yes, but I couldn't he only got, any of them. Because he only got two, the kind gentleman gave it to us for free. He did. So that was very sweet. So if you come here, you have to come and buy some treats. Yeah, so have a look at the name of the yeah. place. Yummy. So we're just about to enter the Medina, so which is luck because there's 9,000 alleyways. There is. So we're going to the Medina, 9,000 alleyways, no map, and we're hoping to find our not, way out. Yeah, we're hoping to get lost, but then to find ourselves again. So stay tuned to see if we find our way out. <laughs> <laughs> We're entering from the Blue Gate entrance, which is one of the main entrances on the southwestern side of the Medina. Just about to go down the hill, so we're going to head down to some more alleyways. I always thought it was quite flat in all these alleyways, but it's quite hilly in spots. Oh my god, it's Chucky. No? Oh, Chucky's queen. Oh my goodness, it is Chucky. Oh, I have nightmares. Watch his head doesn't start spinning around. Alleyway one, is it? Yeah, this is still the first alleyway. <laughs> we only got 8,999 to go. We've come to our first T junction, so we can go left or right. I think we've gone far enough down here. Let's go uphill a little bit. What do you think? Okay. Climb back up again. Yes. Is that to get me back up the hill? Yeah, that's your that's your donkey up the hill. That's a little place for a bite to eat, for a drink. All right, let's go in. Okay. <laughs> Time for a break. Here's my mint tea. Let's see if I can pour it the way the locals do. The taller the pour, pour the better. There we go. That wasn't too well bad. Well done. No dribbles at all. No. Some tiny little cup. I just have to teach him how to do that in the bathroom. <laughs> I'm sure nobody wants to hear that. Oh, okay. Great. Perfect. Perfect. Thank Perfect. you very much. Oh. Thank you. Oh, look at the bubbles. Yeah. Kefta Tajin. K E F T A Tajin, and it's 65 dirham. Which is really about $10. Yeah. Australian. My yeah. first meatball, Tajin. Okay. Mm. It's a bit hot still. <laughs> but, um, that's really good. Mm. That's really, I can taste coriander in that. Can you? Yeah. Mm. Tomatoes, it's got an egg on top. And it's gluten free. Yeah. So if you come to Morocco, the tagines are all gluten free. Oh. Apart from the couscous one. But oh, you can get chicken, lemon, beef. And camel? Beans. You can get camel. Haven't done camel. But it's going for the meatball. It's on the menu. Yeah, unless these meatballs are camel. But <laughs> Poor camel. <laughs> So that's the nougat, and then we've got a mixed one with lemon and pistachio I think we and try strawberry. All, the all right, let's try all that. <laughs> Shukran. Thank you very much. <laughs> How much are the dates? 100. 100? 100? I give you 20. <laughs> no problem. Okay. Okay. Bella, Look. we have bought you a present. No, we have bought you two presents because yeah. we ended up. We somehow ended up with two. <laughs>
But look at this lovely shop. Aladdin's cave. Yeah, Aladdin's cave. Aladdin's cave. Yep. <laughs> look at the little pretty cow. Hello, little pretty cow. He's so tiny. Hello. Hello. A little guy. He's got a bag full. <laughs> Like all, the all these scarves. Beautiful scarves. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Shukran. Thank you. Shukran. 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 Okay. We may have bought some more ceramics. Just a little one. Just a little one. Just a baby one. Okay. Well, that's all right then, because we've certainly bought enough for today. Yes. Well, we made it out of the Medina in one piece, and it's not too late in the day, so we did well, I think. On the way back to our Riyadh, we stopped in at the Culture Box restaurant again for a late lunch. Gluten-free pizza in Morocco. Wow. That's a pretty good looking pizza too. Four cheese. You joked about camel balls before, but now we actually do have camel tagine. <laughs> Chris is going traditional. Yes. And I'm I liked going the camel last time when I had the camel burger, so. And I'm going non traditional. Mm. <laughs> Gonna go and get a massage. We're going to have a massage. There's one massages here in our Riyadh, so we don't have to go anywhere. But unfortunately, you can't come with us. So we'll see you soon. <laughs> well finished. <laughs> Time for a nap, I think. Oh, it's so relaxing after walking around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> after walking around for quite a few days in a row. Now, maybe a nap before dinner. <laughs> We've just come back from a lovely evening with a local family in Fez. How oh, beautiful. Mama had eight children and the youngest boy was still in the house to um, help entertain us and they opened their home up to our group and cooked us a um, three course meal. We started the night with a traditional mint tea, which is the greeting that we get everywhere we go in Morocco. And then they brought out traditional Moroccan costumes and clothing. And we all got to put those on and look like locals. <laughs> we, they gave us a local name. I was Amar and... I was a, um, Amina. Amina, which Amina. was the fellow's sister's name. So it was quite an honor to be named Amina. <laughs> we started off with Harara which was a nice soup with some dates and some sweet treats. Then we had a fez salad, uh, which is like an eggplant dip and some olives. For the main course, we had pastilla, filo pastry with chicken inside and lots of cinnamon, both the inside and outside, and nuts and whatnot. Icing it was sugar beautiful. on top. Oh, how Yeah, so it's a, it's a really mixture nice. of spicy, and uh, not spicy, savory and sweet. Mm. So, um, and they even made me a gluten-free version, which was really sweet. They mm. made me my own soup and they made me my own Bastilla. It's famous in Fez as their particular dish, like the specialty of the region, I guess you could say. So I was very happy that I was able to join in too. And we had fruit, which was oranges cut up and banana with cinnamon sprinkled over for dessert. And that was just beautiful. The oranges here are just out of this world there. I've never tasted anything like it. So it was a wonderful night, it a was great a lovely opportunity night. and the, the people here are just oh, the Moroccan people are so amazing. welcoming and just beautiful and friendly and um, to do it, you know, an experience like this is un unforgettable. Yeah, and I'm loving the Moroccan people. Yeah, we're happy. They're just, they're, they're having fantastic. a great time. Yeah. And we felt safe, like we felt very safe we over have. here. Um, I know a lot of people were saying before we came, oh, you have to be careful, you have to be careful. And I think you still, anywhere you travel, you have to have your wits about you, but yep. we certainly haven't felt unsafe at all. Overall, the Moroccan people are just very welcoming and very friendly and they'll come up and say welcome to my country and it's just like oh that's so beautiful you know when do you hear that no, awesome. anyway um it's time for us to go to bed now that will end our time in fez we've had a great time here i've yeah. really enjoyed fez it's like stepping back into the old world 
Um, but, but stay tuned to mm. see where we end up next in Morocco. Yes. And if you'd like to follow us on our adventures, please hit subscribe. It means a lot and um, it means that you're liking our content and then we can put more out for you. Yep. So we'll see you next time in Morocco. Good night. Good night. Lydia, oh Lydia.